In the Bible that you have today, the King James Version, John 16, 23, 24, what you have is the condensed version. You have the edited version. All right, let's see it. The edited version looks like this. This is the edited version. Okay, this is the edited version. This is so amazing to me because they took out the two sentences that tell us how to ask. In the fourth century, when the edits happened, they took those two sentences out. Would you like to see those two original sentences? This is the original Aramaic. It begins, it looks very similar. So this is the retranslated version with the missing pieces. All things that you ask straightly, directly from inside my name, you will be given. It says, so far you've not done this. Now here's the piece that was edited. Here is what was lost. Look at these two very powerful sentences. Ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer. Be enveloped by what you desire that your gladness be full. Look at what it's saying. It's not saying to speak a word. It's saying to be surrounded, to feel as if. So the biblical texts have been edited numerous, numerous times over the centuries. That's not really up for debate. But normally when a scholar says this text has been edited, they can present data that make a strong case for reconstructing uh, a different original source text, if not providing uh, actual manuscript evidence for that argument. And we get neither here because this isn't actually the claim. This person is just misrepresenting Neil Douglas Klotz's claims from his book, The Prayers of the Cosmos. Uh, so that book is where we get that idea, if you've seen that video, about uh, a direct translation of the Lord's Prayer from the Aramaic uh, with the Mother, Father, and, and the All Cosmos and all this kind of stuff. Uh, it's just a mystical rereading or paraphrase or renegotiation of the text based on the idea that the Aramaic is far more pregnant with significance and meaning. And so uh, in Klotz's book, he's really just saying this isn't a, a variant source text. I'm just going to pull a lot more significance out of the Aramaic. Now, one of the main problems with this is there's no indication these texts were written in Aramaic. Scholarship overwhelmingly agrees that these texts were originally written in Greek. Now, some of the parts of the Greek may have been uh, translated from Aramaic into Greek or paraphrased or something like that. But you have to make an argument for that. So what Klotz is doing here is just going to a Peshitta edition of the New Testament, which is just a translation from Greek into Aramaic. And then he's saying the Greek got it wrong. And we should be extracting all this additional significance out of the Aramaic. So let's take a look at exactly what Klotz has to say about this passage in Aramaic. So John 16 verses 23 and 24 are treated in the other sayings section of Klotz's book. And specifically it's uh, labeled saying three, which is what we have here. So the first five lines are the King James version of this passage. And then under that you've got Esho said, and then you've got three lines of transliterated Syriac. And then the two lines under that in the Syriac script, that's the Syriac of the Peshitta. So this is the translation of the Greek of John 16, 23 to 24 into Syriac. And then everything else on the page is Klotz's mystical meditation on this passage. So for instance, if you go down to the third paragraph that begins with my Shem, my experience, my light and sound, my atmosphere, my word from inside my name, that is all being extrapolated from one single word, which is in my name, an instrumental preposition, and then the word name with a first common singular pronominal suffix. So what Klotz is saying is this Syriac, this Aramaic, can actually mean all of these things, and so we should list all of these things. Now, it doesn't actually mean all of those things, and you don't list all potential meanings for a word in every given use of that word. That's simply not how language works. So this is a mystical meditation. This is saying, hey, here's all the different things I can pull out of here by just thinking hard about this stuff. Now let's look at a couple of textual notes that Klotz has. 
So here Klotz is just pontificating a little bit more on what kind of significance he reads into these words. For instance, the very first passage here, the word for ask summons forth a picture of traveling in a straight line, asking or desiring directly. The old roots present the image of a flock of birds coming to a watering place. They come directly without hidden motives. Now, this is really just the generic word for ask. It's in a second person conjugation and it has uh, this relative pronoun on the front. So what you ask is what that word really means. And that's it. But what Klotz is doing is looking at uh, occurrences elsewhere, uses elsewhere, if he's even doing that, and trying to suggest that the contextual significance in those other uses can all be uh, imported into the word itself. And so that can be extrapolated from any individual use of the word. And so the use here is just brimming with all this additional significance, so much more than just what you ask, which would be a straightforward translation. And none of Klotz's um, creative mystical meditations here are based on any sound linguistic practices. But what it's also not is a demonstration that the text has been altered. So the original video to which I'm responding is also misrepresenting Klotz by suggesting that this is some earlier version that somehow uh, scribes managed to manipulate into what we have now. This is not that either. So we have uh, mystical meditation being misrepresented by someone who does not understand what Klotz is doing. But this is definitely not what John 16, 23, and 24 say. You can just look in a decent translation of the New Testament to find that.